how important, how precious the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is, you need to look at the Lord Jesus himself. When you look at the Lord Jesus, when you look at the Lord Jesus, it's from there that you will know how precious, how important is the church to the Father. You see, God doesn't see the church the way many people see the church. The church is the heart of the Father because for God to bring the church into existence, God had to give his life for mankind. Understand? God himself had to leave his glory. He came on this earth, he walked on this earth for 33 and a half years. He paid the price with his flesh and with his blood and, he, and with the spirit of resurrection, he brought about the church. So the church is something very, very precious to God the Father. So if there is an institution that God is jealous of, it is the church. It is the church. That church that Jesus buried with his broken flesh and with his blood. That is the, the greatest thing that God could ever give to the church. Why am I trying to share this topic? I'm sharing this topic with a lot of burden, a lot of burden and passion because of what happened with me. It's true, I've come across so many encounters in my life. I've come across so many men, in my, men of God and pastors in my life. Though most of the times I've always been disappointed and though most of the times I've still kept good relationship with some of them who are very good and genuine. But something happened with me. It happened that the Monday, I had to go and visit one of my branch pastors. And when I went to visit him, as I arrived and knocked, he opened the door. He was so surprised to see me. Because actually I wanted to take him on a surprise. He was so surprised to see me. So when I get in, he was so happy to see me. Then he gave me a seat, we, got, we began talking. By the time we spoke like for five minutes, this young pastor of mine said, Pastor, there's something I want to share with you. With. I said, what? He says, there is a man that has been coming here for the last for, for, the, for, for the last past one month, he's been coming here, and each time he comes, he says, God has asked me to submit under him. That God has told him that where he is, is not the right place. That he should submit under, that I should submit under him. As he was talking, I said, the man said that he has had powerful encounters with Moses. He has had encounters with Daniel. He has had encounters with Elijah. See, so those are some of the things the guy was telling me. So when he was telling me, I said, so, so the man came and said, he wants that you should leave and join him. He said, yes. As, as I asked him a question, he said, yes, pastor. He told me that, the man told me that, hello, he, my comrade, Frank, and I'm happy to see you. He said, the Lord, that the man told me that, that he had encounters with Moses, with Elijah, with many great prophets, and that he has even had encounters with Jesus. And he told me that I should leave you, I should leave the church, and I should submit under him. That if I submit under him, I'm going to be a very popular and great man of God. So that when, by, by the time he was talking, somebody knocked at the door. When somebody knocked at the door, he opened the door. Behold, the, the man in question stood, stood there. You know, God has funny ways in, way he, in, in, in how he does his things. So when the man entered, he, he presented me, the, the man to me, he said, Pastor, this is prophet. He called the man's name. I don't want to call the name. Then he also turned to me and presented me. He said, this is my mentor. This is my pastor with whom I'm working. So the man looked at me in a very, shall I say, despicable, despicable way or proud way. He's a bulky man. He's, he's bulky. He was bulky. And he was fine, physically fine. Refined man. So he gave him a seat. He sat down. So I asked him, so how are you, sir? He said, yes. I said, can you talk? The man just started talking. Started giving encounters with Moses, encounters with Elijah, named some of those things they told him, encounters with Samson, told me things, told things. By the time he was talking, he started prophesying to me, giving me prophecies about my life. He told me things about my past. He told me things about my present. And he told me things about the future. I must confess that the things he told me were not fake. Most of the things he told me about my life were true. You see, he prophesied, he told me things about me which were true. 
Then if he completed, he said, you know, and God is asking me to tell you right now that you should follow me. You should submit under me. If you submit under me, you're going to be very popular and very famous. That's what the man told me. When he told me, I looked at him. Then he said, and also, there is a demon fighting you. I need to pray for you and deliver you from that demon. My God. I looked at him. He said, so, I think, he, then he kept on talking. God wants both of you to submit under me. Take me as your spiritual authority, as your mentor. If you take me as your mentor, I will pray for you. God will anoint both of you. You become so anointed and you will do great things for the Lord. That's why the guy spoke to me. But as he was talking to me, I was just listening. He was talking with a lot of pride and confidence. I was so looking into, listening to him. Interesting. So who is this man that meets me for the first time? He's asking me that God wants me to submit under him. He doesn't even know me. He doesn't even know from where I come from. But then he kept saying, he said, you know, his anointing is an anointing that God sent Moses. When Moses came to him, Moses gave him a, a dress. But Moses gave him a garment. And Moses also gave him a uh, a staff and he has he had the prof he has a prophetic and the deliverance ministry of Moses so when he said that I said wow I said okay he said can I pray for you he asked me if he could pray for me and my pastor one of my pastors I said I told him that well it's possible but can you please share with 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 us the word of God. You've been talking about prophecies, prophecies, and everything encounters. Can you please share with us the word of God? That is what I asked him. I gave him the Bible. When he took the Bible, this man, when he started explaining the scriptures, he could not explain the scriptures according to the new covenant. That's the first thing I discovered with him. He was talking only about things concerning deliverance, breaking, taking you out of poverty, taking you out of limitation, taking you out of delay, taking you out of spiritual stagnation. He was just talking about those things. He could not teach me what I wanted to see the spirit which he functions with. I wanted to discern the spirit which that man functions with, you see. But he was not talking scriptures to me. He was telling me about deliverance, how he's going to break the spirit of the uh, curses, all those things of curses, limitations. Wow. So when he finished sharing he quoted a passage in in joshua and he said he asked me if he could pray for me now and my one of my pastors i said yes you can pray for us but before you pray for us i want to share with you also the word of god can you give me the bible he gave me the bible when he gave him the bible i took him into the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the lord jesus christ that is the gospel of god's righteousness when i spoke with that man for just 15 minutes into our sharing he be, he was so he began agitating. He, the place became uncomfortable for him. He did not like the environment. He was as if it was as if somebody wanted him to leave. He stood up. He was so restless. I realized the man was so restless. I continued sharing with him. The very soon he became angry. So what? I continued sharing. Before I behold, he started vomiting. When the man started vomiting, I knew the guy was possessed. When he, when I knew the moment, the, the, when I discovered he was possessed, I said, "In the name of Jesus." You wicked spirit operating through this man. You deceptive spirit, spirit of deception operating through this man. I bind you and I command you to leave. When I said that, the man fell and the demon started shouting, talking. I asked, who are you, the spirit? The spirit, the spirit said, I'm the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm the spirit of deception. I'm the spirit of Jezebel. Those are the three spirit, the spirit, three names they give you. And then I commanded the demon left. When the demon left now, the man got up. He was surprised. He got up, he sat. So full of shame. As he was so ashamed of himself. He got up, he sat. I, I just took the Bible. I taught him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I taught him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, now he received the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, 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 he was so happy. He was so happy. And I decided that I was going to come and share this thing with us. Why am I going to share? There are many things that many experiences I've had. Many experiences that I've had. But sometimes I don't like to talk on those experiences because experiences cannot take the place of God. Any man of God, that one that comes to you or a pastor that comes to you, he wants to make you see him or her to be great. 
and he starts telling you experiences he's had maybe with jesus maybe with angels those kind of things it's good we have those experiences it's for the church you understand but then any man of god that comes he tells you those things one after the other he's he, he, he cannot take you into the word of god be careful with that kind of a person be careful that kind of a person when that guy came he wanted to create a superiority complex so he brought in his experiences encounters 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 little did he know that he was operating under a demonic spirit a spirit of deception he did not know that you guys know that Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 that they shall come false prophets shall come and Apostle Paul told, told Apostle Paul told us in Corinthians that they shall come as angels of light. And Jesus, Jesus Christ, even when again in Matthew chapter 24, he told us that false Christ shall appear. That false Christ shall appear. Why am I trying to share with you this topic? I want to share this topic with us because most majority of children of God, they depend on the anointing or the gifts of a so-called pastor of a so-called prophet they are not interested in the message the man teaches what they are interested of is the power the demonstration the things the man does if even if the man does things that are contrary to what the Lord Jesus Christ said just because the man claims to be hearing from God just because the man talks and you see a result they tend to accept and they tend to embrace those things and they don't take into consideration that Jesus said him Jesus Christ made us know that it's we shouldn't we shouldn't judge people based on gifts there is a way we should judge them let's judge them based on the message that they preach so I really decided to come today and share with us this topic because actually we are there, there is an end time generation of youth that God is preparing God is preparing there is a last move of God that is going to take place on earth and God has already started God has, God is already equipping these youths this last end this last time generation where there will be demonstration of the power of God more than what had ever existed where people will see powerful things where revelations will come up there is that move of God that's going to take place while God is busy molding and training this last time generation the, the devil also is building his own generation of counterfeit counterfeit anointing so there is there's going to be a there are going to be two kinds of anointing during this end time. There's going to be what we call strange anointing, and the anointing that comes from God, the counterfeit anointing, the antichrist anointing, and the anointing that comes from God. And if you are a child of God, if you are not so grounded in the word of God, you will be carried by a strange anointing because you feel fire on your body because you feel electricity on your body because somebody laid hands on you you fell down you when you saw that you went to heaven you see you tend to 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 to, to believe those experiences those sensational things and you will minimize the fact that God says that we live by faith and not by sight and not by sensations and not by feelings, by faith. Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. That's what the Bible says. That faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. It is the word of God that builds faith. It is not a sensation. It is not prophecy. It is not miracles. Nothing other builds our faith. What builds our faith is the word of God. Which means if you don't focus on the word of God during this end time and you tend to look at the superficial, the demonstration of power that people are going to do, you will fall into the trap of believing strange anointings. But because you don't have the, the true word of God within you, you will be able to discern that this anointing is not from God. Now, if I was not someone grounded in the word, these guys 
this guy will have carried me with his with his strange experiences with Moses, with Elijah, with Daniel, and everything. He will have carried me, and he will have laid hands on me and released demons upon me. But thank God that I am not moved by so-called prophecies, by so-called encounters with angels, by so-called encounters with Jesus, because I know there will be so there will be many false Jesus will appear, because I know many false prophets will appear, because I know many false angels will appear. I know that those things will happen. So as a result, when I meet someone, what I want to hear from that person, it is the gospel of the kingdom. I want to see if this person is preaching the same gospel Apostle Peter preached. Is this person preaching the same gospel Apostle Paul preached? Is this person preaching the same gospel the apostles of the new covenant preached? If his gospel is different, then I know he is functioning with a strange spirit not the spirit of the new covenant because there is a spirit of the new covenant and there is a fake demon or fake demon fake anointing operating in so many people who call, call themselves pastors prophets but that is an anointing of an old covenant and they even call anointing of the old covenant is not even the old covenant there is it's a strange jezebel like anointing that they use and they prophesy and they do things and they deceive so many this guy could have deceived me Thank God that by the time I started speaking, he fell down and God started vomiting and the demon left. And I preached the gospel to him and he believed. Now, what I want people to notice is that when that guy was delivered, I never ended there. I had to teach him the word. I took him to the gospel. I preached him to the gospel. Why? Because it is not the sensation of him falling down and speaking those things. That is that true? Is that, that's not what brings true freedom. What brings true freedom? It is the gospel of the kingdom. And I had to take him into the gospel of the kingdom to reveal to him the righteousness of God that is revealed from faith to faith. I had to take him this gospel. When I taught him this gospel, then from there, when he received that gospel, I knew now that that gospel will give an access for the true spirit of God to take access, to, to, to take hold of him. Because we have so many people operating with strange spirits. No wonder why the gospel they preach is not the gospel Paul preached. It's not the gospel um, uh, Peter preached. It's not the gospel Timothy preached. It's not the gospel Apostle John preached. They preach another gospel. They take us to the Old Testament and they come, they shout, they make noise. That is exactly what happened with me and that guy. He came, was making noise, making noise, but by the time I took him into the gospel of the new covenant, he, the demon, was exposed and he was delivered and he received his true freedom so i decided that i was just going to come today to share with us the word of god how should you discern that somebody is operating with a strange spirit that's the question you should ask yourself how can i discern that someone is operating with a strange spirit Please, if you're just joining me, please, I want you to share this video. Share and tag your friends. Invite them. Blessed are the hands that are going to share this video. Share it and invite your friends. How do I know that someone is operating under a strange anointing? How should I protect my calling from a strange anointing? How should I protect myself from a strange anointing, from a strange spirit? from a spirit of an antichrist to use me how do i protect myself now the first thing i want you to know no man can protect you but god and yourself i repeat no man can protect you but god and yourself what do i mean i mean that the responsibility for you to protect your calling depends on God and on you. God is available for you to tune to him and receive the truth that will protect the truth, your calling. If you think that your destiny is in the hands of a man that is already the antichrist in oppression, let me tell you something. The first characteristic of any man of God or pastor operating with an antichrist spirit is that his gospel is it's always about I, 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 I. That is the first thing. 
His gospel is a gospel that portrays him, that brings him more in the lamb light. It's more about him. It's more about the gifts operating in his life. It's more about the anointing operating in his life. It's not more about the miracles, the miracles. Whenever you find yourself in any gathering or in any church where the man of God or the pastor in that church, his language is more about himself. God told me that I am indispensable. God told me that without me you cannot succeed. God told me that I am the one to deliver my nation. God told me that I am the only prophet of my nation. God told me that I am the voice, the, the only voice. The moment a spirit, a, a man of God begins to tell you that message, he tells you that the secret to your success is in his ear. He has the keys to your success, which means he makes you to know that it is his prayers for you. It is his fasting for you that will take you into your inheritance. Know that you are under an anointing of a false prophet, of an antichrist. Now, I want people to know something. It is not everybody who operates with the spirit of an antichrist who is conscious that he is operating with the spirit of an antichrist. Get it well. It is not everyone who operates with the spirit of an antichrist, with the spirit of a false prophet, who is conscious that he is operating with the spirit of a false prophet. When I met this prophet last Monday, when he saw me, the first thing he started talking to me, he started giving me prophecies about myself. He told me things about my past, my present, my future, which were true. He told me many other things, his experiences, experiences. But when I gave him the word to share, he could not share with me the truth. He could not take me into the gospel. But by the time I started the word of God with him, the demon started manifesting in him and he felt. Started, the demon started manifesting and he was delivered. What if I was moved by the prophecies he told me? What if I was moved by the encounters he had? He would have laid a demonic hand on me and he would have transferred satanic spirit on me. Now, this man I met, he was genuine. He did not know that the spirit operating, the spirit he was operating with was it's a strange spirit. He did not know. It is when we started talking on the word of God that he realized that he was actually operating with a strange spirit. To the strange spirit. So the first characteristic of any man or any woman of God, how do you know? How do you descend? You don't descend by feelings. You don't descend by sensation. You descend by knowledge. You descend by the word of God, by knowing the word. So the first thing you should know in the new covenant is that in the new covenant, the Bible tells us that there is one man, Christ Jesus. He is the mediator between man and God. Which means God has given Jesus as the mediator between God the Father and us. Now, any pastor, any prophet who comes and tells you that he is indispensable in your life, without him, you cannot succeed. It is his prayers that will make you to succeed. It is fasting that will make you to succeed. That he is like, just know that you are in an environment where the spirit of an antichrist is functioning. That is the first thing you need to discern. You are in an environment where the spirit of an antichrist is operating. Today, what you need, what am I, what I need, simply, is Jesus. Jesus is the person we need. When you get tuned to Jesus and you have his spirit in him, church is important. I'm not asking you not to go to church. We need to go to church. Church is important. We need to fellowship with one another. But then, if someone comes and tells you that he is indispensable, he tells you each time that God has made him the only prophet of the whole nations. That God has made him the only prophet maybe of your country. That God has told him that he is the best. He is unique. That he is the biggest. He is the... In fact, without him, no, he is operating with the spirit of an antichrist because god doesn't function like that again in the new covenant in the new covenant the spirit of god has been released upon everyone who is available to operate in supernatural gifts 
So if somebody comes and tells you now that God has made him special and God tells him that he is unique and that he is the only one and that without him no people cannot succeed, that God, he begins to tell you that having encounters, encounters, encounters and he cannot take you into the word of God, don't spend time in that place. Look for your sandals and run. You are under an atmosphere of an, of an antichrist. Now, the second, that's the first characteristic of a force, how you should discern somebody that is false. That is the first way. Look at the person's language. Is the person's language revealing Jesus? Is it more about Jesus or is it more about him? That's the first thing you should know. Is the person talking more about Jesus? When he opens the Bible, is he saying, is he revealing Jesus or the person? is just there making noise making noise making noise and very soon he says demons out and you see people fall people make things no don't fall for that don't fall for that that is not god look from acts of apostles when the holy spirit fell upon peter the first gospel peter preached in acts chapter 2 look it was all about jesus all about Jesus. He revealed Jesus from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Look at Apostle Paul. It was all about the revelation of Jesus. Look even when Jesus appeared to John in the in the book of Revelation and told John and told and, and he appeared to John. He told he, the, the first thing said, "This is the revelation of Jesus Christ." That is the message. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you realize that the gospel of the new covenant is a revelation of Jesus. It is not the revelation of a man. So if you, you are under an, an anointed, under somebody who calls himself a prophet or a prophetess, and the person's thing is more about noise, it is not revealing Jesus, but it is revealing the, how, the anointing of that person. It is more about how anointed that person is leave that place you are up you are under the anointing of the antichrist let me prove you why i say you are under an anointing of the antichrist why because if the person has the holy spirit the holy spirit will talk to him and bring him back on track you are wrong stop that but the reason why they keep growing they keep growing they keep growing and they keep doing the same thing is because the spirit in them keep telling them that you are anointed you are best i'm going to make you big you go around the world you go giving the person prophecies that will make the person to grow in pride the person will see himself that he's more anointed than others those are demonic anointings those anointings of the antichrist that operates in this last generation. And the Satan has released that anointing to adulterate the callings of young men of God that God wants to use. Now, it is left for you and I to be conscious of the fact that God has called us to operate with an anointing, a Christ-like anointing. Because if you don't understand that, you will fall in that trap of sensations and you'll be carried away. The first thing. Now the second point, how to descend if somebody is operating with an anointing that is from God or from Satan. Please, if you're joining me, share this video. Kindly share this video. The second thing you should discover is this. Now, if you look the gospel of Apostle Peter, when Peter started his gospel in Acts chapter 2, right? When Peter started in Acts chapter 2, you do not hear any you do not hear peter mention anything like demons in acts chapter 2 or chapter 3 to 4 you don't see peter mentioning anything like demons he preached jesus he preached the message he knew that when you reveal jesus demons run away demons hate to see when you glorify jesus The apostles knew that demons hate when you glorify Jesus. Demons hate when you talk. Jesus, Jesus, you are revealing how glorious, how powerful, how anointed, how Jesus has set us free. They hate it. So, Peter, in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 3, when he did the first sermon, 
In Acts chapter 4, when you see him and Apostle John preaching, continuing, Philip, Apostle Paul coming, you don't see that the Bible says they were casting, that they were preaching gospel and they were saying that there is a demon of limitation, there is a demon of delay, there is a demon of stagnation. Those guys were apostles, which means they were functioning with supernatural gifts, powerful gifts, more anointed than most of us. But the Bible says that they revealed Jesus. They revealed Jesus. They were not talking about a witch or about a wizard somewhere, but the Bible tells us that they came in contact with witches and wizards. Um, but their gospel was about Jesus. Whenever those witches and wizards heard Jesus, about Jesus, they were exposed. Ruth, just take, I just want us to, if you are watching me, go back, take the book of Acts, study the book of the Acts of Apostles. So you see, these guys did not talk about demons of limitation, delay, stagnation, poverty. They were not interested in those demonic doctrines. They were interested in revealing Jesus in the Old Testament and in the New Covenant. That was what they were. And when they revealed Jesus, the Bible says the whole world was shaken. This guy shook the whole world with the gospel of the kingdom. That is why you can ima imagine that when you read the Bible, you see that it was so extraordinary. Why? Because this guy preached the pure gospel. Their focus was the son of the living God. They revealed him in their messages. Now, a second point to know that somebody is operating with the, deep, with the spirit of an antichrist is that the so-called Holy Spirit he has, has one goal only, to show him demons. To show him demons. He sees demons. You have the demon of stagnation, the demon of poverty, the demon of celibacy, the demon of, 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 of limitation. The, you, so, so the spirit in that person, the Holy Spirit in that person, keeps showing that person only demons, 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 demons. As a result, in that environment, whenever they come, when they take the Bible, they have in mind, their mind is demonic manifestations. They want to preach the gospel and just say, I cast out demon, fire, do this. With the aim of setting people free from demonic, that is not what the apostles did. I'm going to ask you a question. You watching me? This is the word of God. This is the word of God, the Bible. Do you believe this word more than your pastor? Or does the voice of your pastor count more than this word? There is an entire generation of youth that God is raising. And this end time generation of youth that God is raising are people who would elevate the word of God above any other name. The Bible tells us in Psalms that even God the Father has elevated his word above his name. The Bible tells us that in the book of Psalms that even God the Father has elevated his word above his name. But men of God today have elevated their name above the word of God. And there is a generation of people just following these people. Even if these people are doing things contrary to what Jesus said, they just obey them. They just obey them. They don't take into consideration that God... is above any man now i want to talk to you something you watching at me first thing your life does not belong to any man it's in the hands of god and you secondly you will not give accountability to any other man but god thirdly 
you not come you not stand before god's throne of grace and tell god that this man deceived me no god will hold you account not another person thirdly the success of your calling depends on god and you the way you collaborate with god Fifthly, fifth, if you have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you have the greatest weapon to succeed in this life. There is no prayer of any man of God. There is no fasting of any man of God that is more than the person you have in you. That's something you should know. And ask yourself this question, you watching me. Where I fellowship, do I value God more than this man? Do I enjoy God? Is my faith dependent on God? Or am I pursuing following a man? So, the second point of these people operating with the spirit of an antichrist is that their gospel is the revelation of demons. Jesus revealed the Father. When he appeared to John, he said the revelation of Jesus Christ. There are people that when they read the book of Revelation, they want to see the Antichrist. No, when Jesus appeared to John, the thing he said is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not the revelation of any Antichrist. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Servants of Jezebel. People operating with the Jezebel-like anointing, with the spirit of deception, they will shout Jesus, 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 Jesus in their churches. But they will not reveal you, Jesus. They will not reveal you, Jesus. They will reveal you demons. That is why in those churches there is no revelation of the gospel of the kingdom, of salvation. To show people how Jesus has set them free. Because if you look the apostles, when they started, they ended with that same gospel. Even when John spoke, John in Revelation said, and they overcame him by the blood of he was still talking about the blood in the book of Revelation. These people they preach a gospel of fear. The gospel that makes you see that you are deep, you should be dependent on them. So how do they keep you in bondage? they make you know that there is a familiar curse operating there is a demon of limitation so they are always revealing demons of poverty limitation demons of stagnation even though the bible says that that christ was cursed for us now you watching me i want you to know something the Bible says, even Jesus grew in knowledge, in wisdom, and in favor before God and men. He grew. He grew. The reason why you easily fall prey for these false teachings of Jezebel's servants is because you want quick success. You want quick success. Spend time with whatever you're doing. Educate yourself. Study the word and God will take you high. Now, I'm just going to read us a passage. Wherever you are with me, I want us to read a passage in uh, in 1st Timothy, in 1st Timothy chapter chapter 4. 1st Timothy chapter 4. Please if you are with me, open in first timothy chapter 4 i believe that the lord wants to put you to protect your calling 
Nobody will protect your calling for you. You have to protect your call yourself. No man is going to protect your call for you. You collaborate with God. Challenge false doctrines. Protect your calling. And serve God the way God wants you to serve. But if you want to honor man, you will be in an environment where the man is doing strange things. That is not what God told us to do. And you are still there. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, this is what the apostle said. But the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in the latter times, some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to the deceitful and seductive spirit and doctrines of demons. That's what I told you. Now, let's just look in the church today, especially in our African context church and some churches. What do you see more? Don't we see deceitful and seductive and doctrines of demons? How do I know that these are doctrines of demons? Because when I look at Peter, when the Spirit fell down upon Peter in Acts chapter 2, the Spirit was interested in revealing Jesus, not demons of limitation and stagnation. The Holy Spirit upon Peter took Peter and Peter was preaching, revealing Jesus. When I go to Acts chapter 4, I see Peter revealing Jesus with John. Even before the, 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 the authorities, he was revealing Jesus and John. When the Spirit fell upon Paul, what did Paul do? Paul revealed Jesus. It was all about revealing Jesus. It was all about revealing Jesus. They were not going to church or going to minister that they want to, to see if a demon, yes, if you see if demons will talk, if demons will do this. That's how you know false prophets. False prophets and false teachers, when they go to church, their main thing to minister is that they want fire to come down so that somebody will manifest demons they want this they are not interested in revealing jesus they are they they want demons to manifest they want demons to speak when somebody operates with the jezebel antichrist spirit that is what it is in his mind now let's go in verse let me just end the doctrines of demons let's go in Acts chapter chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 let's see something in, in Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 from verse 9 I want you guys to see something what I want to reveal here it's very important this point it's a very important point don't miss this point in Acts chapter 8 chapter 9 to 25 now there was a man named Simon who previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria claiming to be someone great listen he was practicing magic and amazed people in Samaria and claimed to be someone great false prophets will always claim that they are great. But people with a true spirit <laughs> are not interested in greatness. They are interested in revealing Jesus. False prophet with the spirit of an, with Antichrist first, deceptive spirit or spirit of Jezebel. When God, when the so-called God appears to them, when the so-called God appears to them, that so-called God shows them only revelation, how they are moving from plane to plane, entering one planet to another, or ministering to thousands and millions of people, how they are driving huge expensive cars, how they are great, how they... That is the spirit of the Antichrist. It is a spirit that is out to make you know you are great because the spirit wants to feed you with pride. And that's how that spirit is upon most false prophets. Let's continue. Verse 9 says, They all paid a great deal of attention to him, 
from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is what is called the great power of God. Have you seen? The Bible says that this man called Simon, he claimed to be great because he did signs and wonders. And verse, verse 10 says, and people paid great, a great deal of attention to him from the least to the greatest, saying that this man is what is called the great power of God. They paid attention to him and not to God. The moment a man of God makes you to pay attention more on him, what do I mean? He makes you to pay attention more on him. He doesn't preach to you, Jesus. So, oh, God tells me that I'm the greatest. God has told me that without you, without me, you cannot succeed. God has told me that I'm the one to anoint you, to make you. God has told me that you, the moment a man of God makes himself indispensable, he is not operating with the spirit of Christ. It is the spirit of an antichrist. And what he is practicing is sorcery. That is what happened to this man called Simon. You see, verse 11 says, They were paying attention to him because for a long time he had mystified and dazzled them with magic, with his magic. Thirteen. How do you know a false prophet? He mystifies miracles. He mystifies the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They mystify it. They make you to know that no, they operate in these gifts because they are unique. There is something they have done. It is no longer a gift. It is, there is something they have done. And oh, they are so precious to God. God sees them different the way He sees you. That is how this man called Simon was doing. He mystified the gifts. Jesus told us, lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. But when these people come, they don't make you to know that the anointing is in the message. They make you to know that there is something special about them. That you are not special the way they are. They make you to know that God considers them more than you. They mystify the gifts. Those gifts that come for free, they make you to know that no, it's not just for free. Why? Because actually, they are not operating with the spirit of, the, of Christ. It is the spirit of the Antichrist. Verse, verse, verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, listen. I want us to see something with an apostle called Philip. Verse 12. Acts chapter 8 verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Why did the people believe Philip? Because he preached the good news. What was that good news? About the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. That is what Philip did. He was preaching the kingdom of God and the good news about the name of Jesus. So people were interested in Philip because he was revealing to them the Father and the Son. He was revealing to them the kingdom of life. Then the people were interested in Philip. This was contrary to Simon, where the people were interested in him because he dazzled them with spiritual gifts and he mystified it. He made them know that, no, there is something special, an encounter he had. He mystified it. Apostle Paul had powerful encounters with God. He says that in Galatians. I know a man, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, I cannot see. 
caught up in the tech heaven and he heard things unlawful for men that man had encounters but you don't see him narrating his encounters in the bible i have encounters people who are close to me sometimes i tell them those encounters powerful encounters but why is it not good because encounters make people to see you as somebody and apostle paul said it so philip revealed the kingdom of god and the good news about the name of jesus and the people believed in him because of that false prophets or people function with evil spirits they dazzle people they mystify gifts they mystify their nothing they make it look at something mysterious now verse 13 i pray god that this broadcast should really move well because it's really the internet seems to be really disturbing i don't know why the internet is very very slow and it seems to be breaking and stopping verse verse 13 says even simon believed philip's message of salvation and after being baptized he continued on with philip and as he watched the attesting of signs and great miracles taking place he was constantly amazed so there is something that happened with philip philip's goal was to present the message so when philip presented the message of the kingdom of god and of the name of jesus the bible says that god backed the message of philip with signs and wonders the bible says god attested now in places of false anointing strange anointing they elevate the gifts above the word the man of god elevate his name first his spiritual gifts second the miracles about the word which means he doesn't reveal to you the message about jesus he comes and he talks something he just mixes things up and down but he doesn't give you a message that delivers you from the conscience of sin it doesn't make you to know that you are really the righteousness of God that God sees you as his own he gives you a message that doesn't deliver you that doesn't deliver that, that does not deliver you he maintains you in the captivity and he dazzles you with his spiritual gifts like called demonic gifts operating in his life he dazzles you with those gifts hello please if you can watch me let me know if you can watch me because you see myself my my you see myself the broad you see myself the broadcast has gone off you see myself the broadcast have gone off if you can watch me let me know if you i'm live yeah something it's gone off i don't know what's wrong i don't know what's wrong <laughs> 